Today, I'm going to tell you guys the five steps you need to know to buy your first rental property in Canada. What's going on, everybody? My name is Andrew. And for everybody who is interested in becoming a real estate investor and looking at picking up your first rental properties, everybody needs to know where should they start. And popular to contrary belief, a lot of people believe that the first thing they got to go do is get out there and start looking at properties. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is a waste of time. So I'm going to break these down in a very simple way so you know what you need to be doing to jump into the market. And I'm also going to share some of my suggestions. So make sure to stick around for that. Step number one, get pre-qualified. A lot of people don't do this first step and they kind of end up shopping for properties that they don't even know they can afford. You will have a lot better results if you work with a good mortgage broker. And one of the main reasons why I really like working with brokers is because they get paid commission. They get paid based on closing a mortgage sale and therefore they are motivated to make sure that you get a mortgage. Now the second thing we're going to do here is establish some financial criteria with respect to what you can afford and what type of property you're looking for. And this is where you're going to take into consideration a few different things. If you're buying it completely on yourself, you can just look at what you're expecting and what you want out of buying a rental property. Or if you have partners, they will have their own expectations and you want to make sure that you're on the same page and you should talk to an accountant so you understand what the tax implications are. A lot of people will just do simple math. Rental income minus utilities minus mortgage equals profits. And that is not the case. Any seasoned real estate investor will tell you. So make sure to plan appropriately. Which by the way, if you want access to our calculator, that'll be a very helpful tool to making sure your calculations on these products are quick and easy. Make sure to click on the link in our bio. Now the third step here is looking at the right market and property and working with the right professionals. Let's just say that if I know I'm qualified for $700,000, I'm going to search for properties within that price range. And then I'm going to see what type of properties are going to give me those financial expectations that I am looking for. Now, these two steps, two and three, are going to influence each other a little bit because your financial expectations might need to be refined a little bit after you look at the market and realize that maybe your expectations were a little bit too bold or a little bit too lax and you'll be able to tighten things up. Now, what I like to do is I like to shop for three units minimum. Why? Because three units pays the bills and a lot of people find properties that kind of just barely break even and they're not able to get by or if a tenant stops paying rent you're in a lot of trouble so i like to go for three units because the first unit is going to pay for the general bills of the house maybe some repairs the second unit hopefully will pay for the majority of the mortgage and then the third unit is going to be what gives you some pocket money some of the profits so at least then if you don't have one unit rented or if you have problems with one tenant and the income doesn't come in you're not left paying for a property out of pocket putting you in the more financial strain. Now we negotiate. Every possible property you can see will probably be able to meet your financial goals under certain circumstances. What's a certain circumstance? A certain price point. Because I ask people this all the time. People look at a property and say, I don't want to buy this. $500,000 for this piece of junk. But if you look at it, you might say, well, would you buy it for $400? Would you buy it for $350? And with a financial calculator, you can quickly calculate what makes sense to you. And this is where you make your max offer calculation. That is what you base your financial decisions on. How do you make a decision as to how much should you pay? You don't always ask the realtor because the realtor is motivated for you to transact, meaning they want you to buy. So they have a little bit of self-interest here. You need to know how to calculate based off the market. The realtor should show you comparables. And most importantly, you need to buy properties that make financial sense to you. If you are negotiating a rental property and there are units that are undervalued, you should be trying to negotiate vacant units as much as possible so that you can choose your tenants. Now, the fifth thing that we're going to end things on here is to close the deal. Now, when you're closing the deal, make sure to have all your ducks in line. Now, a lot of people just seem to think that the lawyers, that the financial advisor, the mortgage people are just going to handle everything. And a lot of people don't realize that as you approach closing date, things go wrong. Make sure to handle your due diligence. Close on the property by making sure to have your inspector in and your finances, meaning your mortgage, is in order and in line and under the conditions that you wanted them. You want to make sure that everything is as tight as possible because not everybody is going to cover things for you. And then as long as you close properly, you'll be on to your next step, which is finding the right tenants and starting to make some cash flow. There are a lot of things that come into play when you're trying to get your rental property in order, including how to manage it and operate it and leverage it in the appropriate ways. And we have tons of free content talking about how you can do these things if you want to know more about it, including training and coaching programs. So make sure to check that out. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.